Hello and welcome to Inside the Americas and the Lando Souza. Coming up on the show this week. Donald Trump announces he's running in 2024. The former US president getting a jump start despite calls from some Republicans to head in a different direction. Amazon is reported to be laying off 10,000 staff. The move from the e-commerce giant comes after similar announcements from Meta and Twitter. And NASA's next generation moon rocket blasts off on its test flight. The successful liftoff of Artemis 1 from Florida came on its third attempt. But first, Donald Trump has announced he's running for the presidency in 2024. The former US president ignoring reservations from Republican lawmakers to delay his announcement following the lackluster performance in the midterm elections. The speech made from his Mar-a-Lago resort in Florida was over an hour long and inflated Trump's accomplishments while in office. Solange Mujan reports. Seeking a rematch for the White House, Donald Trump invited hundreds of supporters to his Florida club for what he calls a very big announcement. In order to make America great and glorious again, I am tonight announcing my candidacy for President of the United States. Just leave me alone, I got... For just over an hour in a rambling speech, Trump spoke of his economic record, vowing to bring inflation down to zero. And he portrayed the U.S. as being in the throes of darkness due to the Biden administration. Like never before. Putting America last, as the Biden administration has done very, very openly and bravely, because I can't imagine saying, let's put America last. I think it takes courage. We will again put... America first. In Indonesia for the G20 summit, Biden said that he didn't really have a response to Trump's bid. But on Twitter, the U.S. president said that he feels his predecessor failed America, posting a video that says that Trump attacked basic rights, rigged the economy for the rich, and coddled extremists. Twice impeached, Trump is currently facing multiple lawsuits and investigations. Such legal woes, though, have not squashed his 2024 hopes. I am your voice. I am your voice. The Washington establishment wants to silence us, but we will not let them do that. Just before his speech, Trump's aides filed official documents for his run. His relatively early announcement comes as he tries to get ahead of other Republican hopefuls, namely Florida Governor Ron DeSantis. Thank you. The former president remains deeply popular with his base, but the lackluster showing by Republicans at the midterms, especially by Trump-endorsed candidates, has many conservatives in Washington wondering if it's time to back someone else. To our number of the week next, and it's 10,000. That's the amount of staff e-commerce giant Amazon reportedly wants to shed. The move comes following layoff announcements at Meta and Twitter. James Mulholland reports. Alexa, tell me a joke. Why are coffee beans such troublemakers? They always end up in hot water. Alexa always has a good joke on the ready, but for many thousands of Amazon employees, it's no time to laugh. The New York Times is reporting that around 10,000 people will be laid off as early as this week, mainly from the company's retail departments, gadgets division and human resources. It would be the largest round of firings in the history of the 28-year-old company. One analyst says Amazon and other similar companies grew too fast during the coronavirus pandemic. Clock struck midnight on hypergrowth. And now you're seeing the cuts across the board. Amazon is no different. And this is really a rationalization of cost structure and slower growth times. Amazon doubled its workforce over the past two years, but now the tech company is looking to cut costs. And it's not the only one. Mark Zuckerberg's Meta, the parent company of Facebook, announced last week that it was axing 11,000 jobs. That's about 13% of its workforce. Twitter's new CEO, Elon Musk, has been criticized for his brutal takeover after he let go of half the platform's 7,500 staff just days after his arrival. Many contractors were terminated without notice. On Tuesday, Musk sacked several employees for publicly or privately criticizing him, including engineer Eric Fraunhofer, who denounced his dismissal as cowardly. 
These are just the latest in a string of layoffs this year amid declining profits and economic uncertainty in the global tech sector. If confirmed, Amazon's cuts will take the total number for the month of November to over 35,000. The vast majority of those will come from the US, which has heightened fears of a recession. But prospects for those recently laid off remain healthy, according to analysts, with tech job openings still well above the pre-pandemic level. Now, our image of the week next is of NASA's moon rocket, which has blasted off with three test dummies aboard. The successful launch brings the United States one step closer to putting astronauts back on the surface of the moon. Now, if all goes according to plan, Artemis 1 will propel a capsule to orbit around the moon and then return to Earth with splashdown expected in the next three weeks. We can now bring in Jean-François Clairvoy, astronaut for the European Space Agency, who was previously with NASA. NASA, great to have you on the program today. Uh, why not just use the same technology uh, from 50 years ago? Oh, because the technology at that time was uh, very basic, couldn't do much and uh, was more risky. Today we can do safer systems. And thanks to the, the performance of computers, we can uh, be more ambitious for the kind of trajectories and for the duration. At the time, they didn't have solar arrays, for example, so missions could last only a few days. So at the time, it was just a race. It, uh, the purpose was to go before the Soviets. And uh, of course, each time we go, we do some science. But this time, the purpose, the main purpose is to repeat on the moon what we plan to do one day on Mars. So moon is like a, a test bed for preparing for living and working on very far distances. So as far as the objectives are very different, it's normal that the, the spaceship, the mission, the content, the operations uh, will be different. There will be a station in orbit around the moon uh, called the Gateway. It is funded, it is decided, and the Artemis program beside the rocket SLS and the capsule Orion plans this uh, gateway around the moon from which there will be sometimes uh, travel to the surface and back to the South Pole. So it will be harder than 50 years ago. But, but this mission is unmanned. When will the mission be manned? So this mission is a test mission. So it's exactly the same systems, the same ship, the same rocket as the one planned for humans. But because it is a test flight, we do it uh, unmanned. But the next flight, uh, about a year and a half from now, in 2024 will be manned with a crew flying around the moon on a very elliptical orbit, uh, sometimes flying very close to the moon, few like 100 kilometers. And part of that orbit will be like 70, 80,000 kilometers away from the moon. So it's a quite uh, different kind of orbit than, than the one that we have flown in the Apollo program. And the following mission, Artemis 3, will be with men and women, including a descent to the surface from the orbit of the moon. So we go unmanned first, then man only around the moon, then man around the moon and on the surface of the moon. So it's, it's a step by step, yeah. just to be precautious. There is no race uh, as opposed to the Apollo era. So we take our time to make sure things are are done properly. Jean-François, I, I know you're an astronaut, so you're excited by space and the moon. But for a layman like me, why bother going back to the moon at all? You know, first, because the moon is there. And whenever humans have been able to go somewhere by foot, by horses, by bike, by cars, then by plane, now with rockets, we go there because we like to explore and discover. And when we discover, we get uh, more knowledgeable, and when we are more knowledgeable, we are more inclined to, to be peaceful. You know, peace comes with knowledge, and knowledge comes with uh, discoveries, and discoveries comes with exploration. And the moon is not really the end point of, those, of the, art, the whole Artemis program, of, of the whole thing. The moon is a step 
before going to Mars. The moon is not the final destination of that whole program. And one interesting fact is we do it together. It's not anymore a pure 100% American program. Mm -hmm. uh, for example, ESA, the European Space Agency and the European industry is on the very critical path of all those missions because we provide the European service module which carries the Orion capsule. Now, you've been to space three times, so would you potentially want to, to be sent to the moon? Of course, of course. For, for any astronaut, we like to go to space, and each time it is further or longer in duration, we like to do it because it's, it, it's always pushing the limit. When you push the limit, when you do things harder than, than what have been done before, you become stronger. You know, experience comes with daring to do new things. And uh, so that's why those missions are far more ambitious than the, the Apollo missions. We will stay longer, we will uh, resupply the crew there, we will uh, try a new technology, re uh, recycle technologies, we will do experiment in orbit and on the surface, we will learn how to operate a habitat far from Earth, because we need all that knowledge before we go to Mars. Jean-François Clairvoy, thank you very much for joining us on the programme today. My pleasure. Now, in other news, uh, Angela Alvarez, a uh, Cuban-American, has been nominated for the Grammys at the age of 95. She began writing songs in Cuba in the 1930s but kept her ambitions hidden. Her grandson, Carlos Jose, went on to become a composer himself. In 2016, a friend of his uh, asked if he was waiting for his grandmother to die before doing anything with her music. The musician then flew out his grandmother to LA to record her life's work with a host of Grammy-nominated artists. I spent my lifetime loving music. And the news of this nomination at 95 years old, it's incredible. If I die tomorrow, I'll die very happy. Remember, dreams come true. And thanks to the Grammys, we'll meet in Las Vegas. Nos vemos en Las Vegas. That's it for this edition from all of us on team. Thank you very much for watching. Special events. The Titans will clash in Qatar. The world's best players battle for the World Cup. From November 20th through December 18th. Don't miss World Cup news daily on France 24 and France24.com.